Hello, hello. It is Sunday, and you guys know every Sunday the Raw DAO comes together in the Raw Think Tank in our Discord, and we talk about what's going on, set realistic goals, set out tasks that our entire community can help with to help us all accomplish those goals and, you know, show people how you can collaborate and build something like this together in, in a decentralized way. So I personally definitely enjoy these um, Sunday conversations when we get to talk about what's happening and hear everybody's idea, opinions. Um, they always mean the most. So even if you're not able to attend them on Sundays, we do always share them on YouTube. So if you're listening to the replay, just make sure you share any ideas you have in that ideas chat um, because we would love to continue to build on that. And our ideas chat is where we all continue to share ideas from this conversation from so don't feel hesitant to um, share yours if you're re-listening now uh, welcome Zay thanks for joining and we're going to keep rolling so today we have a few things to talk about one being the fashion show um, and a lot of the ideas that we have for that including our countdown or like a challenge um, two contests that we'll be hosting and the goal and purpose for what we're trying to achieve with it um, and then we'll be talking about um, our Twitter spaces and then also Wonderverse, um, which presented last week, which are some pretty cool decentralized tools, as you guys may remember. So those are our um, few topics that are on the schedule for today. I'm going to start by actually sharing my screen and let me get Twitter pulled up here first because I want to make a very good point. So. I'm sharing my screen for those that may have never seen this before. So if you go on Twitter and you're like, man, I really want to know what the raw DAO is about. Let me see what they're about. They, they sound good, but let me see if they got with that, you know, something to back it up with. So during season one, when we had our first um, appearance in a fashion show for New York Fashion Week, it was great. Um, we were we did that with Digilex and the Global Designer Network. And it was amazing because at that point, I was the only designer that had ever minted um, NFT fashion. So all of the other designers that showcased the showcase um, a part of the raw DAO in that fashion show Literally, that was their first time being in a fashion show and minting an NFT. And we had onboarded all of them onto the Global Designer Network, which is another DAO full of designers and how a lot of us have even started intertwining. So it was great to be able to use that as an opportunity to help does designers see that especially because a lot of these designers were already digital designers so it was really cool because we connected them with the physical designers and so the physical got to collaborate with designers from turkey and and just all india like all over the globe and got to experience what that co collaborating was like in this space firsthand so we had a challenge um for our hashtag raw blackout <clears throat> and what we did was every single day we had a different question. So like here you see day nine, how it started versus how it ended. So this is um, CJ who does crochet. So she, um, you know, changed. Um, did her pictures like that. So yeah, so you can keep scrolling though. You see this was another one. Um, and again, hashtag raw blackout. So you can see here day eight, support another designer where you just show off different things, right? So again, CJ showcasing everybody's different things, temporary malfunction using um, the hashtag raw blackout. And he actually was a designer independent and had his own um, part in that fashion show, but still used the hashtag raw blackout challenge to be able to showcase his processes as well. So, and these were the things that we had basically made every single day we would post one of these um, flyers. And then we did also have have a flyer to show which each day represented and again this is one of those digital digital designers that I mentioned something that's really cool about what she does a lot of people ask about you know we're going physical to digital but can you go digital to physical and our answer is always yes and we go into so many different details usually I'll go into the 3d printing synopsis because it's like that's the whole point of this whole digital fashion thing in the first place is preparing for the 3D printing aspect aspect of it in, in a sense. So that's usually the part that I um, look at. But there's also other parts about like sustainability and zero waste in those parts of the fashion industry that are 
can be tackled. So this designer here, something that she does is, um, you know, she makes tie dyes as well, but she also includes a pattern where you can, again, see that you can cut this out and get the five different pieces that she created in her NFT. And you can see like this says pants, skirt, and all the different pieces there. So very cool, you know, and again, another different artist who wasn't a part of Raw, but again, used our hashtag for this challenge. So that is the point so that again, you guys can see look how cool this looks when you're just scrolling through hashtag raw blackout here's here's me one of my pieces that i made my sweatshirt um that i had made into this thing but you know again it was just really great to be able to use this as a way to juice it up you know it was like a countdown we we did this two weeks before the fashion show every day hey, all of us audio Sorry. Yeah, I lost your audio. Can you hear me now? Okay, I thought it was just me. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, why is it doing this to me? Okay. Hey, uh, okay. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, you're back. Okay. Yay! Cool. Sorry about that. I don't know why my audio is playing with me today. But yeah, so more of the story though, hashtag raw blackout. Hashtag, you can also see it if you also check like raw, um, raw season one. So if you look at hashtag raw season one, this was a lot of the stuff we posted then as well. When we were doing that airdrops, when we had our smart contracts, we would do like an airdrop for supporting different things. And again, you can just find a whole lot of what we did during season one by using that hashtag. So this is a great opportunity for us to be able to do the same. Um, because, you know, if we look at hashtag raw season two right now, I have used it a few times this season. Um, so you will see some stuff, but this is just a great opportunity to use our new theme because even this theme is hashtag raw renewal so if we look at that theme i don't think okay so i've used it like twice oh, yeah a few times actually yes yeah, it's, it's looking it's looking all right but it's not the same as when we have actual behind the scenes show us the process on actually how you created your pieces that you're showcasing and welcome Ke kelly thanks for joining um, so very exciting. That's something that we want to start building out. So everybody share your ideas about what um, that challenge would look like. Maybe we want to do something again where every single day we're posting something different. Um, and if that's the case, you know, let's pick out another 10 to 14 things um, you know one day is about posting bloopers or inspiration or somebody else's works different kind of things like that and um, posting there so make sure you share your ideas Does anybody have any ideas about a challenge or a countdown or anything like that before we kind of move on to the next nope cool no worries just food for thought think about it <laughs> come back ideas chat share your ideas for that challenge so um, moving right along along with those challenges so aside from the um, challenge for the artists that are actually showcasing and you know them pr creating that um, hype up to leading up to the fashion show we also want to create hype for those attendees so we have two contests that we've kind of talked about last week but afterwards we ended up having a lot more ideas um, so I did want to talk to everybody before we started rolling things out like officially officially so the very first one being that the content contest that we talked about so last week we mentioned like um creating a flyer right and um whoever's content uh in the flyer we would end up minting that and then auctioning it as an nft that's what we had talked about afterwards um as as for that being like the prize for whoever's flyer got chosen so some things I was thinking, kind of exploring that idea some more was why don't we really make that challenge something that people really want to like win, right? So instead of it just being one flyer that we use, we can encourage everybody like, okay, we're about to start launch we'll create like our main little flyer between us that will launch June 1st to just tell people like, hey, tickets are on sale or tickets are free sign up now you know 
we're going to still we decided we're still going to use Eventbrite to collect email address and um, be able to send emails to all the people that are attending but the event will be free and we are going to use Eventbrite so that they can get tickets information for everything that's happening and then um the idea is for our visitors to also fill up their swag bags. So if you guys also remember, Vlad had um, gave the idea about creating these swag bags. So in our, and let me pull up this folder here real quick. In the brain, so that you guys can see here. And let me share my screen. Because it's all about kind of like, even even when um me, when we were building this weekend, it's like, okay, people go through the scavenger hunt and what do they get at the end, right? So it's all about incentivizing the entire community. So that's why it comes down to, okay, well, what are people actually getting out of what they're putting in? And we can create that value and not make it all about, you know, money. It's just about the connections and the support and different things like that. So here in the brain, you guys should um, see the physical to digital fashion show. You can also see um, the key is for designers to create folders here where they can continue to add stuff. As you see, I've created some examples where you should put an about you section. And this is where we're going to pull information to make the clues. And then this will be um, my piece, for example, that I'll be actually importing. Um, and then you can actually see this is another designer who's created her own folder and she has some really cool stuff in there that says renewal so exciting um so yes you see that folder there um so this will continue to build and i'll end up moving that actually let me move that back over into here because she probably just got a little confused but perfect so now we see those two but what i'm talking about right now is this swag bag so here you will also want to have another folder so i have to follow up with her about that contribution so you guys just seen mine so this pattern that i have here is actually a pattern that i pulled off of the tie-dye that i made that is on my digital counterpart so for me when i set up my you know display this will be the free thing that people get with mine so you'll get this pattern that you can use for whatever you can use it to make content you could use it to make banners but you'll also get this cool social media banner that you could put on social media um so that's going to be my swag back contribution so by the time people complete this um scavenger hunt they'll have a full swag bag full of everybody's you know different things that they've collected so for that I also want to put that on artists as well our creatives like how can we build that hype around them as well so when it comes to the content contest what I'm thinking is telling everybody you know if you want to be a part of the contest everybody make a flyer whoever the top three people that get the most interactions with their flyers now are in the top three and then maybe on june 18th which is the day before we'll all vote on it and then whichever one has the most votes you know out of those top three then that's the one that will be minting and will be on auction at the fashion show so we can do like a reveal at the fashion show like oh this was the content that had you know got the most hype received the most votes and now we're auctioning it off um to kind of really build up momentum around that vlad i see you unmuted what's up just need to know what you want on the flyer because I'm where along the line I missed this part. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, I will put out all those details today, but it's basically just going to be a uh, physical to digital fashion show. I like to say the first raw um, physical to digital fashion show um, because, you know, everything we do, we could add the word raw before it because what we do is raw. You know, we, we bring that organic connections organic work ethic organic materials those really raw um pieces that really make what we do raw and it gives it that raw feeling that people do appreciate and they do feel that and that's why they end up sticking around so um anything along the lines of like the first physical raw physical to digital fashion show in the metaverse um in the neos metaverse um join the discord um get it get a ticket um and I'm going to put more information like actually how to get that stuff and create the Eventbrite link so that people can link it however they want. I'm sure some people will even want to do videos. Um, but just about that, you know, a flyer, very, very straightforward, um, catchy. But I will create like a, um, a outline of the details for the event so that people can put it however they like. But great question. 
So, yes. Excited about that. Did, did anybody ha- else have any ideas about that um, contest? And Or everybody think that's like a cool way to do it with, you know, letting the hype kind of build around who has the most interactions with their content and then narrowing it down to like a top three and then us voting bo- and then kind of revealing it around the lines of that or any other ideas? Nope. Okay. No worries. Again, if you think of anything, share it in the ideas chat. Um, other contests. So that will be the first one. And that one actually will be minted through metagames as well. Um, also. So when I was talking to Tommy and we were talking, um, he was saying we could mint an NFT with them. For, that would be for auction. So that would be a, a minted along with metagames, which I think would be really cool too because, you know, it would be like a way to commemorate our whole entire partnership with metafest too as well so very exciting stuff um second thing second contest is a fashion contest so something during that we talked about during our last building session or actually two weeks ago was having our own avatar so that when people enter the metaverse the cool thing about neos is they have really awesome public files so anybody can go into these public files and use anything that's in them including avatars so you get like a, a range of like ready player me avatars robot looking avatars um furry looking avatars all kind of different avatars that you can literally choose from i usually go for like the flying robot looking ones <laughs> um but we are thinking of actually creating our own ready player me avatars like a male a female and then having a contest to design their outfit so with this again i was thinking along that same lines having anybody who wants to be a part of the contest be a part you can design maybe a t-shirt some jeans maybe like a one piece you know what whatever that outfit looks like to you i would say at a standard a t-shirt because then you know they can wear whatever pants they want but it, sometimes i make body suits so if you want to go you know the whole shebang outfit go for it and then again we have just these two ready player me outfit or ready player me characters and then i was thinking it would be really cool to <clears throat> put the different outfits on the females and the males and then whoever has like the most people that choose to wear their outfit during the fashion show is how we would kind of see who wins the the fashion contest aspect of it um because again it's like it's the same avatar but they're in all these different outfits so again i think those would be fun ways to include the fashion show and revealing a lot of the um contest winners which i think will also kind of give us some main events like oh let's see let's reveal the con the content contest winner let's reveal the fashion um contest for our avatars so just kind of packaging you know we always have these ideas and then have to just package them into our little pretty boxes so that's how i'm thinking of packaging up that a bit um vlad what's up not to disrupt your idea but uh have you thought about doing a raw dow mascot spokesperson whatever think about with when i saw alana do her web three girl kind of you know thing it kind of made me think of Smokey the bear think about the everybody that's known for 50 years only you can prevent forest fires i mean it's something that across the united states every little kid from from the time he was three has known who Smokey the bear is and it's something that's recognizable ronald mcdonald same thing burger king the 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 hamburglar i mean we all know these these iconic brand associated uh spokespeople or mm-hmm. you know whatever have you thought about possibly doing one of those oh yeah I definitely wanted to bring it up <laughs> I'll get out of your- definitely definitely um it kind of had come down to we we are very closely aligned with a lot of digital avatars already um and those were kind of ones that we had been collaborating with but having our own like mascot like you said that is something we had mentioned very briefly in the beginning when it was like hey we're kind of putting ourselves after university even when we get down into like our core team uh, although we just call them the raw mods like we had really put in work in creating a full name for them so there are like elong 
elongated names for each of our core teams that kind of put them in line with being like a fraternity like you know how it's like kappa alpha psi like there are literally three greek letters to represent each one of our um core teams as well and so we had mentioned uh, a mascot for those same kind of things so I think that would definitely be cool to revisit for this kind of stuff as well um Vlad I was thinking more of non-traditional though like kind of like an apple like maybe because it's like an apple a day that that's really where I kind of always think when I think of like the apple like oh an apple a day here's here's like the apple that you need to digest and kind of keep you healthy the balloon guy. yeah exactly Exactly. So something like that, but I'm definitely with you on that. And I think that'd be cool. So I haven't seen anybody else on mute. So yes, those are the two contests that we can have going on for our creatives. That way we can get a lot of people to help make content, push their content um, and tell people about the fashion show. Uh, Our goal, that was the last thing for the fashion show is the goal for the fashion show. So the goal for the fashion show is to set up displays that will remain there. So all displays are due June 12th. After June 12th, I am locking the raw world and whatever is there is what's going to be there for the next quarter we're not going to keep building in there and everybody keep adding into it at that point Uh, we will continue to build for our next event but as far as more artists and more um, creatives wanting to create their displays after that um, I, I would say no so that way people can put in the work when we do open that up because we are trying to put ourselves in a position where people are looking for how they can showcase along with raw so we also have to create like guidelines um openings closings and when people can um you know start to showcase i think having that closes on the 12th it won't be open again until we open it up for the next event and then we kind of create our new display then we'll do that especially because a lot of um the things that we plan on doing for example um is having like ar galleries right this is just a start but you guys know we have a lot of things that are going to branch off from this like ar galleries so that we can put together these showcases that anybody can um pull up on their phone put in their backyard and it'd be as big as they want oh cool and again so you know this is just the start of showing people how we are going to be able to showcase their nfts no matter which platform so the idea is getting those displays set up and then continuing to host events during the next season so some of the really really cool things is like think about um game day right or college football and everybody's watching it on Saturday but my husband um, he always calls it game day that we're kind of looking at now with this idea and we have a stream team that's building um, you guys already know Shamgar in our chat he does a lot of gaming for like um, regular games or actually the gaming uh, streaming for gaming is what I mean he does streaming for gaming as well as a lot of other people in our chat you know are gaming and streaming but aside of that we also have a lot of streamers that stream other content um as well like if you guys have seen um miss milky peep she's in new zealand she does like a different kind of digital design where it's more like i want to say like paint um so if you ever see like her peeps that have like big eyes small eye she draws all those using like um paint more so but i think she streams like every day or once a week or something like that of her actually making the new peeps so i always end up watching her when she streams um and then a lot of other designers like paola and just so so many others that are streaming while they're creating filters while they're creating digital fashion and we're basically going to create like a game day where we can go into the metaverse go into our you know raw world and go and feature all these different streams and you know maybe we'll have a stream that will show you about um creating something in clo 3d you know maybe we'll have a oh, oh, sh- creating shoes in clo 3d or something like that workshop and then on a, on the other side you know we'll have oh a, a gaming contest because we also wanted to have our own um competitions and um 
things like that for the um and I can't think of the exact word for gaming when you guys have the competitions but again things like that and so it's really exciting how we're building out that stream team uh, we have had a, a meeting so far about it and we're basically going to set it up like tiers so that when people come in they'll come in as an apprentice and then can grow to the next tiers as they get further and further and those are some of the things that we are going to continue to do as we continue to build out our entire DAO, you know, we got, we always talk about the roles and how the more you put into the community, the more access you then start to gain from the community as well. Um, and in turn, say for example, our streamers, if you're streaming on Twitch, if you're growing, in that space as well then you're also getting more subs you're also getting more views you're also getting supporters in that stream team it's also how those that are not streaming are supporting those that are and again creating this whole network of people that you can game with play with connect with uh you know merge with in order to help grow and grow that audience um so very exciting with how we have kind of started to form that and kind of roll that out and be able to merge that right merge the stream team to be able to watch twitch live streams you guys you know we've started doing that i'm live streaming on twitch while we're building together and we're going to keep that going i'm going to be live streaming doing all kinds of stuff everybody can live stream and say hey go into the raw world while you're watching so Again, showing creatives how they can use what we have in order to do that. And there is a nice little tidbit um, that somebody mentioned before here on what we are really building and what this is transforming into. I'm not going to go too much into detail about that um, because I have learned that you do have to be build and then share so we are building right now. i very excited about the direction that that has started to go into. Um, so, yes. Anybody have any questions about game day, setting up the displays so that they can be present as we can continue to have events throughout the next quarter in order to help showcase NFTs and other artists, stuff like that? No. Very clear. Cool. So aside from that, um, Twitter spaces. So Twitter spaces, Twitter spaces. And I'm happy that Havo and Kelly are here since they help run Twitter spaces. So something I was thinking is on Sundays, one of the things that we do as strategists, um, and I'm happy Tiny's here as well, is we always make sure we understand this is what's happening this week so that we can make content and start to plan when we should promote content and have the entire week to promote content. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that well, but it works out better. <laughs> at the least, by trying to have that done. So I would encourage and really push, and I know Kelly and Havo, uh, us three, have all been talking about structuring, you know, a uh, schedule anyhow, but really, um, just to get started, let's make it a goal to, on Sundays, um, put out what our topic is for each of our Twitter spaces and who is going to be on that panel that we have set so far. Um, the times, the dates, try to get that Twitter space link if possible, the flyer done if possible. So that way Monday comes and we can start pushing it. We can start sharing it. We can start putting it out there. Uh, maybe we need to confirm a few details. Monday we can use that to confirm those details so that Tuesday comes and we're starting to put it out there. But what I've noticed is that these spaces that we have are building a lot of hype. They are building a lot of momentum and we want to help that as well. So by just being, um, you know, organized and saying, OK, our goal is to have this figured out by Sunday. Let's share it because we all make a lot of content around it. Tiny makes a lot, a lot of content around um, everything. Like, say, for example, we have our banner now. She updates that. So she'll update times, places, topics. But she does that on Sundays. So, again, all of us having that same task makes it easier for the next group to be able to do things like make the content around it or be able to say, hey, Anybody that wants to make content, here's the information that we have, make content around it. Because I've seen a lot of people really do like making flyers for our Twitter spaces, for our events. So if we put it out there to our community, this is also how we can keep getting them involved and how they want to be involved. So um, that that's something that I would love to make a goal to have established. Um, one thing I was thinking, I know we have a strategy call at 10 a.m. So 
uh, if you cannot make that uh, for our Twitter space um, leads or organizers, I would say at least put it in our text. Um, and Kamo, I don't think you've officially onboarded, so you don't have the strategist role, but we um, have a chat. I sat in an onboarding session and talked to Vlad and, and uh, Java for like an hour and a half. I yes. don't know if that counts. It, it does. It does. <laughs> you have. I was just about to say, all you need to do is fill out the Google form because we use oh, that. Oh, okay, for sure. Yeah, yeah, we use that to get the bio and your picture that we put on our get book of everybody. And our social media, we do like a full introduction, like, oh, welcome to the team. And it's really nice and cool. So, yes. Oh, cool. And I was just, I was thinking about making, I was, because I saw like there were a whole bunch of like, like pre-made like widget things. And I was wondering, I just like almost have enough coding experience, but I just like need to find a good widget builder because that'd be so cool to just plug that Google form in and get these really cool little like card things. Yes. I'm sure you can do it. Yeah, if I, if I figure would. it out, I'll do it. Cause yeah, I, I totally wanted to do that too. Yeah. And, and we have the template for the card literally. So if we had like the widget that could just get that after you fill that out, that would be perfect and take that step out. So cool. And that's why I like having you a part of the team. You know, we again, same thing, but you know, in different ways. So definitely all about how we can merge that in order to make this stuff happen. So cool awesome so yeah i'll get you that google form so you can fill that out that way we can just drop that in the content curators chat every sunday everybody can just post what their topic will be and um who will be talking in that panel and of course i know like physical to digital for example we didn't have uh, an, an exact panel per se it was just more like the topic um but even that would just be enough you know and then we can create content around that so yeah that's probably because i'm gonna have like like, and it's because I found it easier to get um, just like over different spaces. Like if you have a topic, and then it's like booked and everything and you have like a flyer, and then you're going in like, during the week, asking some people that you've like identified, or maybe someone you're like shooting for, um, that you'd really like to get on a space, but just like put it on their radar. Yeah. Um, and then keep those conversations, like maybe we have one or two like special guests um, each time. But yeah, it's like generally unless we hit like some capacity where we need to kind of like gate whoever is coming up to speak but right. until that point yeah i'd love to keep it like open yeah and i'm for... with that i'm with that too i was thinking that too like even if it's just one or two people that you know it's like raw times faithful use times whomever times whomever um just because i also realized collaborating does help grow that audience because they kind of pull in theirs as well and then, yeah i was uh, i was gonna ask like is that i because i last time i was going super fast i like did it while on a call like did the flyer and i just dropped our like logo on there um but would you like should i put like if there's like a standard that I'm just putting on everyone on Sunday and then I can go and update it when I send out like reminders or whatever, if I do get a special guest, but should I just put like raw times faithful youth or something? Yeah, that would be cool. Or we even okay. have a, um, we have a little logo that is like cut out that you could put on there as well. Or, you know, even like how you the have circle it, just, thing? just with your words. Yeah. The circle thing. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but even, even if <laughs> you just type thing, it out, I'm so brain dead. <laughs> no, like, it's cool. It is, it is the circle thing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, even if you're just typing it out and you, like how Havo types, you know, the raw down under f f um, Fashion Fridays, that would be cool too. However you put it, it's just um, same same thing, you know, just to get that community in there that's familiar familiar with those names and want to be there. And um, people are used to, hey, raw Dow has it. We're going to everybody get on the stage. So those little kind of indicators. And then with Twitter Spaces, last thing, a big, well, big, big thing that I was thinking with those is podcast so i don't know about you guys but our twitter spaces get so many replays especially like it was funny havo has sent uh our last fashion friday twitter space and when he has sent it it was up to like 239 people i think had tuned in and he was like wow did this many people really tune in and i'm like well not that many people were there when when we were live but that number is going up because people are still re-listening to it and let me see if i can actually see how many it's up to now because i'm sure it was um 239 when he has sent it and it's pro probably up now again but you know hey, those life, life hack you can use that to get as many po up as you want they don't like i mean i sent my picture from like right after the space ended but then i was thinking about it after and i was like wait a minute 
um, because I only got cleared for in my first like defining DGENs thing. I mean, the account only had 70 followers and I was asking for a hundred po app. We ended up 157 people tuned in, but I can see why they were laughing at me. So I just preempted and appealed it before they even denied my appeal or like my request for more codes. And I sent, I had to link, like I linked the recording, a picture of the recording thing, which I mean, it, it's still, it said like 160 or whatever. Cause it was like soon after the thing, but I was like, wait a minute, this could have been, you could literally get whatever. So I don't know. You said you were only got, getting 25. I didn't know if that was because like of an approval thing. It was, it was, it was. I had only asked for 50 uh, and they still had oh, rejected it. And it was only like 25. And I'm like, I think it's because a lot of people now are using POOPs for Twitter spaces and Twitter spaces does get g bombarded by the POOP farmers. And my question is always like, what I, I want to know what people are getting out of farming these POOPs. Like what is all the hype? Because I, I mean, they are really cool, but I feel like there has to be more to this <laughs> for people to be like, that's what I was telling. That's my biggest like when I'm like t teaching co op and the why behind it is like you guys are really going to sit there and say it's a gimmick when there are literally co op farmers. Like yeah. you can't ignore that. Yeah. And, um, and, but yeah, no, I mean, like I, I, I get it to some extent. Um, just, but that's just because I know like ETH OGs and I know the kind of like the convoluted things that they come up with like requiring po op for that just like ostracize. Like, I mean, it essentially creates like a a caste system like by like knowing exactly like how you know long someone was involved how many things they've done like how consistent their engagement in web3 what they've learned about like it could be used in so many ways like in the future and like how it's being used at the, like dow level like dow to dow mm -hmm. they'll like um essentially you can do like hostile takeovers with <laughs> Partially, partially by PO app because PO app's the number one incentive mechanism for DAOs over money. So mm, I um, see. it's like I a see. Huge, it's whole thing. It's like a whole drama. It's hilarious. Okay, I see. I see, and I and I get that because that is something we have started to do, right? Oh, you have PO ops now. And this means that you have taken this, right? This is something that we've used as placeholders, even with how we said, oh, Fashion Fridays. Um, you know, this this week we had our first one, so I sent it out to the first random twenty five people that joined. And it's like, oh, now if you have that po op, you know, they were talking about a drop that they were doing with um, Alexander McQueen's like son or grandson or somebody or cousins, <laughs> one of their relatives. And it's like, imagine if it says like, hey, if you attended Fashion Fridays and you receive that po op, now you get access to our um community call our one-on-one -on -one chat that we're actually having with um the mcqueens and it's going to be a more intimate setting you know and then also if you have that um one now you also get invited to an event that the mcqueens are having separate from jevils and then also maybe it can you know just start to yeah it's just open-ended open so it's like things. you never know what you're going to get like le like left out of right. anytime something needs to be gated especially cross community like we right. have so many different communities in the fashion space and right. so like if we ever host like a a large community event and then we, we have to gate it in any way or there's like community da uh grants start coming out where we're giving away like money it's like that's a huge thing on your like application is how do we know you know how long you've been in the space you don't necessarily have to be the loudest voice right like yep, <laughs> exactly yeah. um but like you can show that history and so you're like doing yourself a huge disservice by not getting pop you don't even know how it's going to impact you in the future right yep exactly and that's something that we can start to educate right that's why we all decided hey we are using po-ops because we understand that and um we are understanding how you use that to incentivize the community and educate them firsthand and use it for those same kind of gates as well you know with opening up more of our community because being a decentralized community we're all on the same playing field right some of us have more governance tokens than other because some of us have put in more work than others and it doesn't matter how long because some people can come in and do a lot instantly right whereas some people could have been in from day one and just kind of watch from the background so just just like kelly said it's not about how long it's you know being able to really gauge that engagement especially with us saying one of the things that we are doing is gauging not using traditional 
numerology like oh how many people are in our discord and how many twitter followers do we have and how many retweets are we getting like that's all fine and dandy but that's not what's really important to us because we don't care about the entire world it's more about those people that want to contribute and be a part of our our ecosystem that's cool uh, what's up vlad Actually, it's a very useful thing because I've been looking at them as gold stars and not even paying attention to them. I think I've got one out of all of them. Out of all the things I've ended, I've managed to to pay attention enough to grab one po op out of the whole. Oh, um, might so, as well have joined Web three yesterday. No, no, that's that's <laughs> useful to know. Well, I practically did. I I've been here for I think a total of five weeks. So, wow, that's incredible. I'm, so I'm not really. I'm not really um, not really starting too late, but yeah, I've just seen it as a gold star pat on the back, and I'm like, I don't really need this. But uh, now that I know that they have actual, you know, clout and value, mm-hmm. I'll start paying more attention. Yeah, because you can so, get them from anywhere. Think about it. it's like it's like when people have an event and they're like, yeah, we're having free pizza, and it's like at first you think, ah, I don't care about free pizza, but a lot of people go there just for the free pizza, and then it's actually like Kelly said, you know, something that will track to say, hey, no, I really went to this event, so now you've got some credibility to get you into the next, um, you know, to help you start gaining that. Yeah, and like I, I was. The first time I was like, I knew how important it was because of like DAO research and like there's this huge like spreadsheet where it has like the different kinds of DAOs and what kinds of incentive mechanisms like you choose for specific roles. And like, I should actually share all my DAO research. I need to like pull that out of the Miro board. Um, It's like really, really helpful. Um, But so I was like, yeah, yeah, it's important. And then I'm like going to apply for these grants, decentralized grants. So BitDAO, uh, Gitcoin, the biggest biggest like grant um biggest DAOs in their grant programs and all of them required that you had at least one po app wow. now they were just using it for um as an identity uh buffer like i mean the one biggest concern with like decentralized funding is that is it actually a person right, right. um and so they were actually they weren't checking you know anything about it it was just that you had one because it meant that you were a human being uh, or it'd be very very difficult to get a po up um wow. and so so but like they could have they could have checked how long they could have checked which ones and so i got like i was like freaked out i was like oh shit like the and like maybe it wouldn't be grants or anything like that but if you were applying for a job if you were like trying to put your project up for some award or like anything where it's like there can be much more subjective choosing where they can like they can be their partner projects you know have what have you gone to in this ecosystem like in your history in the space it's just like so i i was like wow so you actually can't right now you cannot get decentralized funding you can only get money from vcs yep or like obviously centralized grants if you don't have a po app wow how about I see you have unmuted? Um, What's up? Yeah, hello. How are you, everyone? Hello. Yeah, I just wanted. To, I just wanted to add. <laughs> good morning. Well, good afternoon. Sorry, I just wanted to add to the pop that it's it, that's a super cool thing. Like you can use on the like in the future, like for uh, if you attend like some workshop about a specific topic, like for getting um, a certificate that you went there. Like you know, like you uh, I've done like has up. Uh, certificates like for uh, good practices over the production uh, that we use and and you can get the po to be like the certificate of attention or attendance uh, attendant to that uh, per- precise topic or precise space that you want and it's like the history like it's like you're going filling the, the po ups and those parts like give you like that the certificate that you went that you assist and then you pass on like maybe the test the final test that you get the pop so you understand and you know about the topic so it's like it's a super cool thing to be using in the future as well but right now everybody just looking like just a kind of nft but yeah, I, I look at more like the attendant certificate that you do actually wear there i mean one just sold for four million dollars which is crazy wow i, I didn't hear that no a pop have sold for that much but i and i'm with bankless, some og bankless one which yeah wow. it's like i it was a special one because Obviously, like, you can't just sell your attendance. Right. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be able to, like, sell. You shouldn't be able to buy your way to attendance. 
I, so I don't, I don't know about that, but they don't even live on Ethereum natively. So that yeah. solves that problem. Yeah. And I, and I'm with Hava as well with it being that resume, right? Because one of the biggest things that we tell people with one of the perks of being with raw, because we are not focused primarily on ourselves. Right. And that's something that I always have to anchor back at and why sometimes I come on here like guys, remember to focus on raw too. Like, although we are all building with so many other things, remember to connect it back to raw because we are all raw as well. And we are creating this hub and this network is only going to be as valuable as we make it so one of those valuable things though is by using these po-ops to help people build that resume understanding that right like hey you're taking these workshops you're gaining this this knowledge because these po-ops are looking at certificates um and it does go far because some of the things that i've been looking at i've seen that linkedin you can get you know, certificates on LinkedIn. And if you go through the proper channels, we can establish ourselves where we can give out certificates that can be displayed on people's LinkedIn's so that again, they start gaining credibility. So, you know, using things like po-ops to be able to be that first step in that direction is that goal. So just like Havel said, just keeping that in mind with, although right now we're just at that creating po-ops and distributing level, knowing that the next step is going to be to back it up with more on how that's going to really help you build that resume, really help you get into the next doors, really help you further your connections. What's up, Vlad? <clears throat> then something we need to consider, and it's just because Masashi mentioned it as well. Of the seven of us here, three can't be seen on Twitter spaces. So even though we've been attending the Twitter spaces, we're never going to show up because we're using desktops. So that's of the seven out of three out of the seven, that's what, about 40%? of the population that you're having there at your Twitter spaces when you see them don't even show up where they can be recognized for the po-ops unless somebody does something like the one time I got one, Kelly said, no, no, no. If we can't see you, here's how do you get it? This is what we're going to do. And that's why I got one. Otherwise, you know, I can't be seen. I can't interact. So there was no way for me to even acquire because yeah. I go because nice. I'm on. So I nice. Go. Nice. So yeah. It's this perfect us, idea. I mean, there's 70 percent or, you know, or 60 percent or that can do it. That's great. I and mean, that's fantastic. But at least 40 percent out in the cold because they're either on a Mac. They're on a desktop. And they can't they can't uh, in any way interact to do even let you know they're there right. to not. Yes. So I'm, not compl I'm not crying about it. Just letting you know yeah. that you want to be the standard. Right. You can, you can right. take on the Twitter uh, shadow banning with the ad plan, like 100%. <laughs> like you can take on the, you well, know, well, like we'll I, I the was there, there, you know. A whole other yeah, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that's a kind of the things that you can understand when that, that you understand when you have that pop. Like in this case, like you and me have this Twitter shadow banning thing, and we can actually be, you know, have something for that we were there, you know, because for other ways, like we shot all the screenshots that we were there. So we get the pop. So that that's a way to say, like, you know, a few shadow banning, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm with that. And um, I, I see here that Musashi was saying other platforms. Yeah, Tiny, you're right. BBS market dot market is one of those other kind of um, Web3 native social media platforms that I had explored before. And um, it basically was like you get paid. I probably earned, I haven't been on it in a while, but I probably earned up to like $50 on there. And um, it's pretty cool. And that was just from me tweeting or posting, right? Because it's like basically like we have a raw board. So we would say, okay, if you're posting on here, it has to be about physical to digital or about raw, right? We create guidelines. And um, basically you create a post and people can buy your post. And it starts out at like maybe 10 cent. But the more people that like it, buy it, it starts to go up and um then you get cashed out for the interactions and it, it, it's really cool like i said i've earned up to like 50 dollars. there's a few other communities that i'm a part of that i post like informative posts on because it's just about also encouraging your community to also post good quality content right um got a link yeah i'll share it musashi it's on my other phone that i don't have right here but i'll i'll get on there and i'll share so you guys can see that but i'm definitely open to trying all those things i did try theta 
um, TV instead of YouTube once upon a time. Not going to lie that that streaming was a, a little bit advanced for my new streaming self. <laughs> so um, I have to continue at that. But I'm definitely for trying these different things. And like you said, using that to help grow the raw treasury because we want to be able to continue to look at those outlets to earn passive income for our treasury so that we can use that to pour into our community i would love to have a scholarship program set up where we can tell people you know you can apply for a scholarship that you can use these funds to go and advance your education however that looks like for you and you know be able to support uh artists that are using our themes and support um people with new technologies and all different kind of things so it, it will take us being able to earn as well and using stuff like passive income through social media Media is that way that we can accomplish that um what's up Vlad? Is, is there a way to simulcast instead of go instead of dropping what we're doing now because it is a good outreach to those who are needing to come on board mm -hmm. is there a way to simulcast so that you can do both and maybe we can get some we can bring people over i know i know that uh, musashi's a fan of no let's just move over and dominate the the new media and I, I, I love that, but I think you need to have a foot in both worlds at least for a little while. Yes. And you know what, Vlad, that's a good point to even bring back to the first point that I was making here with these Twitter spaces is podcasts. So that's what I want to transition it to, which I know is still kind of web too. But like Vlad said, you know, we're trying to put it out there where the people are and then bring them to where we are in web three. So just like how you guys are saying, not everybody is on Twitter spaces. So something I was thinking was taking our weekly Twitter spaces, our Wednesday spotlight, our Thursday physical to digital and the Friday fashion Fridays and putting those on um, Spotify, Apple music, Amazon music. I, I already have a podcast that I do that with my book club with. So it'd be very, fairly simple for me to do that for our podcast for Twitter spaces. But I think that would also just give us an, another audience, right? For those people that do like just listening to podcasts on the radio, and maybe they want to hear about the digital fashion industry every single Friday. And then one day they'll end up popping up on Twitter spaces or even how this Twitter space we talked about meeting in Decentraland during the next time. So, you know, maybe if somebody heard that on the podcast and they've always wanted to be in Decentraland, that's when they'll meet us there. Um, so trying to find different ways, again, where we can like recycle what we're doing and showcase it in different ways to continue to spread it so that people can come here to get onboarded. So how what do you guys think about that? Any uh, oppositions to putting it on a podcast? I think that's a great idea. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. It will. Okay, awesome. So yeah, so then we'll start with our three series then um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I will see if I can pull those from this week. I also know um, I'm really happy we had this conversation today because I think our first Fashion Friday will be expiring if it hasn't already. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can snag that one. Um, otherwise, we can start fresh maybe this week um, and then try to go out from there. But I am going to try to get all of our Fashion Fridays that we've had so far. Yeah, that will be great to have uh, the first one and you know the ones we have already there's four i yeah. think yeah, four? I think the first one was six and i think they're good for a month so i think it should still be up there okay yeah i think we push it on like week four right now so i'm gonna yeah. make sure i get it like today <laughs> and then do you yeah. download it from there or like do you screen do you just record it on like your phone or something yeah um sometimes it allows me to download i think i'm going to just try my screen record old-fashioned way that i'm used to because i think it'd be the most efficient it, it's all the same anyhow um yeah and then i i think also because we have other people host it sometimes they won't allow me to download it so <clears throat> just to kind of keep like a mono monogamous strategy for how to do it it would be best for even i'm thinking i'll just stream record during the um space so that i can repost right after instead of having to go back listen record and then repost yeah definitely because i asked around i i tried to download it uh, myself but it just as i told you like it just like downloaded a screenshot of the twitter space with no audio whatsoever okay. so i asked a friend to try to do it 
and he made it, but he just downloaded the link to the audio. So I, I will think it will be a better to record it on the old fashioned way, you know, to yeah. the record it against to the, to the speaker. Okay. So I, well, I believe, I don't know how would that work. Oh, Crazy yeah. idea. Go ahead, Vlad. Crazy idea with no technical knowledge of how hard this would be to do. How hard would it be to set up a place to do a live Neos venue, do the live Neos venue, and then record that, be able to launch it as a vlog, take the audio, cut that out as a podcast, and maybe run the podcast like a Twitter spaces kind of thing? Uh, I don't think it would be too, too difficult if I'm understanding, because basically you can take that recording and if I put it on my podcast platform, it would just take the audio anyhow. Um, and I know Spotify actually does video now as well. So it could even have that visual still if you wanted. Um, and then putting it on something like Twitter, I think would only be the difficult part because Twitter, it's more about like words. Maybe we can like link it there but putting it on twitter i think would be where you might get the you can only probably connect where you can actually go and see the full well, full version of it my thought was we do that we could even then get a couple of small clips of it mm -hmm. and throw it up on like you said twitter with a with a still shot and a link throw it up on um tiktok with a small clip mm -hmm. and a QR code to link it over right? and we could, we could spread this out real easy right. to a lot of places and drive people yep. to see what's going on. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That sounds perfect. Especially cause your QR code, right? Like you said, we could take those little videos, put them on TikToks, and then just share those links all over different social media. So yeah, that would be definitely be possible. Um, one thing I realized is that my Twitch streams are not saving. So I have been streaming every sa Saturday and I think Twitch streams usually will sit there for a week after you stream, but mine's are not. So I got to go in and check my settings because I would like people to be able to watch them afterwards just to get a feel. But I do usually try to get a good like clip. Um, to kind of show what was accomplished during that time and let me actually screen share because I don't know if you guys seen this beauty here but we're gonna see it together okay so we're gonna go to our building chat here and look out at how great this video the first raw physical to digital fashion show is happening in the metaverse June 19th if you want to showcase your fashion, photography, music, or other NFTs, join the Discord and let's get building. Displays through June 12th. Okay, do y'all see how good that looks? Okay. So, um, this is the kind of stuff that we definitely can get and, you know, put it out there that, hey, this is how you'll be able to share your videos. This is how you'll be able to, sh we're going to put the physical and the digital. Do you see those 360 globes? People can be in Neos in VR goggles and literally be experiencing and feeling your stuff. That's a fur bag. And that is actually Zay's um, NFT there. And, you know, you were able to see, go inside and see like the work in process. You can go inside and, and get like you're really looking at her dog and, you know, experience it in a different way. So, you know, using this to show people, hey, I know you've got your stuff, but let's showcase it in a way that's really going to give you that full Web3 feel and um, empower artists with that information. So very excited for recycling. I think being able to share that on podcasts will definitely help our outreach and kind of do everything thing that we've been men mentioning, you know, meeting people on the Web2 and getting them in this Web3 area where we are at. Um, perfect. I've set this all up for communities and brands. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. I see we got ideas going in the community chat. So that's great. So we've talked about just about everything when it comes to our fashion show, the two contests that will be up for our fashion show. I will start rolling that content out this week. You guys know Sundays we make a lot of content. Um, what's up, Shamgar? I did talk about our stream team and game day here today. So people know we've got a lot of stuff brewing. Um, biggest thing with that, if you did miss that, is that our displays are due June 12th. So if you want to display any NFTs 
in the fashion show scavenger hunt your display has to be done by june 12th because after that we will no longer be building so that at that point we can just continue to host events in our space and weekly we will have a raw game day where we can go in support streamers host different streams host different um like competitions and different things like that so lots of really cool things with that um, we talked about the contest, having that with our content, encouraging, you know, whoever get the, gets the most interactions that will get to our top three. And then from those top three, we'll vote the day before to get a winner. And then we'll reveal that winner at the fashion show. And then that NFT will go for auction at that time. Um, and then we'll also have a fashion one where we're going to create two avatars that people will be able to be in the um, world. And then people can create um fashion that they can wear and whoever has the avatar whoever's avatar with their fashion gets worn the most will then win that fashion contest for that one i'm thinking maybe we make a nft that maybe looks like a trophy or something instead um that can be given to that winner or maybe we auction that outfit as well as another nft um whatever you guys think would be an appropriate like prize for these um different winners feel, feel free to put these ideas in the ideas chat and again i'm just kind of recapping what we've talked about so far so that you guys can remember the focus and share your ideas in the ideas chat. Um, then we also talked about Twitter spaces, making sure that we've established what our topic is for that Sunday, what times we're going to be hosting and getting those Twitter links so that all week we can start posting, especially Mondays. We are trying to really put out there what's happening this week and start sharing it all week long. So if we can get that done by Sunday, that would be great. Um, and then also turning our Twitter spaces into podcasts. Um, with that, uh, I was thinking, because I know for the podcast, each episode can be a different cover. So I'll basically just use the flyers for that week as that episode's cover. But for the raw podcast in general, we can have any cover. So I'll put that out to the community to maybe make, you know, a, po a cover for our raw podcast. I think that would be like a cool, random um, task that can be completed and I'm not too I mean I get creative y'all know you guys know content would be like 50 50 but even like for like our raw recaps like I'm not a hundred percent feeling that that banner thing that I made for it but it's like and so I would rather kind of put that out there you know even our weekly recap you know if anybody wants to juice that up please go for it so those can be some of those random things that our community can um, help with and I say that because some of the people that have started filling out the onboarding forms want to help make upskilled uh content so don't be afraid to say this is the kind of content we we are looking for and you know we just have to put it out to our community to be able to help so last thing is wonderverse so we talked about wonderverse last week had a last presentation um i know this our community call has gone on a little longer today so this isn't going to be too too much i did just want to circle back and talk to our entire DAO before I did move forward. But we do have a um, workspace area that has been set up for us. And I am going to start working on that. The biggest things that we can do with um, Wonderverse, if you guys remember, is one, co-collaborating. Just like we are trying to create this like hub for fashion. Um, and think about it like there's the dress x and alana the web3 girl dow and jevils and all these different groups that all of us are a part of how can we organize that right and we've seen that the wonderverse makes it very easy with having all that in one place so again us showing people like this is what we use and if you're collaborating with us let's use it so that we can organize tasks organize calendars organize what we can do i think that would be great um so the biggest focus would be on how to co-collaborate our pods which would be each group and then our task um, and then incentivizing for those different things so for wonderverse um, and this is just from from my like looking at it i know a lot of people had kind of dug into it some more um so i'm going to open it up to see what, what other ideas people had basically but um 
One of the big things for Wonderverse I was thinking when it comes to how we can use that for tasks is think about it like for our SOPs, right? We said the biggest thing with our SOPs is those also being peer reviewed. So somebody submits it and then somebody reviews it and then somebody tests it by actually doing it, you know, and being able to offer those feedback between that process on completing that task because just like we've said there's many ways to accomplish many different things so maybe i created a sop for how to use uh pre-made bots right but maybe musashi has a different idea on how to use pre-made bots and so he makes his version of that sop and now again is it, we are creating a, a process on how people can look at both test them out, offer some feedback so that the next person that comes in and, and needs to use a pre-made bot, they can see the two different ways they can do it. They can see the different, you know, feedback that others that have tried these different ways have and be able to choose what they have and then offer feedback as well. So with tasks, so say we have like a new SOP that's been up, uploaded, then the next task would be, okay, somebody has to review it. Make sure that makes sense. Make sure that you're not telling them to go click on any links that are suspicious you know go look over that maybe even if it's some spell checking <laughs> you want to you know look out for your fellow uh, educator you know if it's an educator dropping like oh how to create um a corset i know one of our designers wanted to do something like how to create a corset in clo 3d you know maybe another designer is looking at that and maybe some they use the wrong terminology or you know different because we all speak different languages as well especially a lot of our designers so you know reviewing it for that person and then maybe a new designer tests it you know and now it moves on to that next step so i think it would be really cool to be able to use the task system in order for something like our sops being able to set it through that process of peer reviewing um also you know every week we set out tasks for our community putting it out there so it's like hey go check our wonderverse board and see what tasks are available go check the wonderverse board to see what's happening because i know havel had mentioned using um wonderverse for um, the fashion hub, right? And being able to put what tasks are needed on there, what's happening on there so that right now as our website is being formed, our Wonderverse hub becomes that um, extension of where we're sending people to go and connect with us and how they can get involved, right? Because that's what the point of that Wonderverse hub would be. That's where we would send people that say, I love what you guys are doing. How can I get involved right now? What can I do? That will outline all the different things that they can do. Just like I just said, oh, we need somebody that would make a cover for the raw podcast. People would love to be able to do that. So we just have to put it out there so that people know what is needed in the DAO and how they can contribute and put it out there and know where they can go to continue to look for that. And that will continue to evolve because um, one of the things that I really, really, really want to get into once we are a larger ecosystem is kind of even having like a job board. You know, one of the things that we talked about initially um, when we created this as well as not only those resumes but being able to be this hub where we have engineers we have creatives we have educators we have moderators and these other projects that are coming in the space when they're looking for those people we are already here as well and can go and collaborate with them so being able to also put you know use that as that job board as well because a lot of people do you know message me like hey I need a, a designer that can do this or somebody that can do that and I just go on my brain and you know think about who I know and put it out there I'm in a few different groups put it out in different groups and people pick up those um freelance opportunities so quick and there are so many freelance opportunities out here so again we create that hub and we'll be able to uplift our community by even having something like that so seeing the future that we can do with Wonderverse and how we can start now I think is really cool just by putting it out there as what tasks are available organizing those by groups which would be our five core teams um, and those would be our pods and then we can also add additional pods like the Fashion Friday um, pod or, or not even Fashion Friday but just like the Fashion Hub pod or maybe the physical to digital pod and um, even like our our um 
groups or our um, clubs, right? Our gaming, our streaming pod, you know, different pods for each of our different focuses where we can, again, say this is a task that we need done for this pod so that we can get to that next step and utilizing that. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week. So did anybody else have any other ideas that I haven't kind of mentioned about Wonderverse that you would like to see included, incorporated, um, or have any ideas on that at all? Nope. Everybody's quiet. Okay. No worries. Again, if you do share them in the ideas chat, I know um, Kelly and Hava and I, like I mentioned, had talked before this and I know Kelly's um, working with Wonderverse. So she probably will be helping as well with actually curating this. Um, and if you guys ever have ideas and think that the, you know, something would be cool, feel free to share it in our ideas chat. I am also um, going to keep updating our roles list, but I want to start putting out a lot of that by the end of this season so that um you know it's very clear again with how people can contribute that's just the point where we're at like putting it out what what needs to get done in the DAO and then letting people contribute however they can that's honestly the goal with everything that we're doing now so those are all the different things we have going on guys I know um we've talked about a lot but we got a lot going on and uh, I think where we're headed is in a really great direction. A lot of people are really interested into our physical to digital fashion show. Like I said, I think even if we don't get as many designers to get their stuff imported, I think we can still have a really good show out with people coming to the fashion show itself. And that being, you know, really cool. And then even afterwards, think about it. A lot of the content for like, these fashion shows don't really pop until after the fashion show and people are like oh wait that's what was happening so this is just us opening that door and that's why I say we're setting it up and then we're going to keep hosting events in there and keep getting the traffic going and looking at what we're what we're building in there um how about I seen you've unmuted what's up yeah I just want yeah I want I want to add to that that we need some like um managing tools for getting the people that is getting on board because the telegram group started to get some traction and i've been answering well not too many but at least like 15 messages like dm directed that people that want to take uh take on the flyer they already send me pictures they also they already send me <laughs> different stuff you know uh so well you know i don't know how to take on that and i'm answering directly to everyone yeah so it's hard you know i'm trying yeah. to do like a a pre messages to be sending to everyone, but I don't want it to be feeling like it's just like that pre message, you know. I want it right. to be like more interactive with them. And well, yeah, I, I definitely think we need some some tools in there for we getting all everybody on board. Like Miro is super efficient, but uh, I think we still need to people to to start using it. You know, I I just I get yeah, I'm starting to get familiarized with it. But yes, you know, we're definitely getting, you know, people on board and want to take on the flyer. So it's kind of difficult sometimes to be mm-hmm. setting the date for the, you know, wanting to take them on the Tuesdays tops. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with the thing that, you know, the different time zone that I send a message and the other guys need to wait like 10 hours until they can wake up and answer back. And okay, who's going to be guests? Uh, you're going to be setting those or I'm going to be calling them. I'm, you know, it's going to be, it, it has, been some you know friction about that because it it, you know i think we're getting started with but once we have like a an ongoing thing i well i expect it to be more fast so we can have the dates on it and the timing so we can start posting on tuesdays until friday you know because as you say well we just have been posting it one day you know before it happens and it has been you know, a lot of interaction with it. I have like 52 likes on and 45 retweets on my personal account profile. Mm-hmm. So it's getting a lot of traction. So I don't know 
I don't know really how to handle it. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's a really good point, Havel. And that's something that Tiny and I always、um, try to think about when we're. And that's a lot of times why I talk about like the foundation, because especially as the founder, I guess that's why those words are obviously pseudonymous. Um, is you know we're still building that foundation right now, and we're creating these processes that work, you know, and we want to be ahead of that curve because, like we said, we you know we're just picking up that traction and. Imagine when you know these groups pop. We can have a really great Fashion Friday one one week with a really great artist, and then all of a sudden have a thousand new people in our space, right? We're putting on this fashion show. Imagine if we had an overflow of creatives now that wanted to get onboarded and a part of it, and you know. Immersed in what we're doing,、um, so looking at that and really figuring out a solid flow that will work. That, like you said, you can keep repeating something that makes sense.、Um, let, let's figure it out, right? And I know that's why we've kind of been trying to outline. Um, about pre-planning, I know with the Twitter Spaces, the biggest thing is just pre-planning. If you can set out those topics, or you got a lot of feedback already. So maybe just like I said, you know, we put a put a closing time on it right now. Like, oh, okay, right now,、um, it's closed to be able to contribute to the Fashion Fridays. We've we've got fifty entries already.、Um, let's or you know. Put these fifty throughout the next month. You know, I think next month there are even five Fridays. I know there were five Wednesdays, so I think there would be five Fridays as well. No, there's only four. One, two, three, four. You know, so look at who you have there. There already, their areas of focus. See what topics make sense. You know, maybe. The third will be about jewelry, and you'll put ten of them in jewelry. Maybe one will be about physical fashion, and, and you'll put you know ten of them there. Or maybe it even gets a little more intricate. You know,、um, focusing on sustainability and、um, that, or、um, all kinds of stuff. You know. Different topics, and then organizing the people that you have that way, and then once you have that organized, then open it up again, you know, or maybe put out the topics first and then put it out there.、Um, but find a system that will work that, like you said, can be、um, easily repeated and then very clear for how people to contribute, you know.、Um, and I think us just outlining that will make it that a lot easier as well with、um, how people can contribute to those flyers and just everything. So I I have that here on my list as well though with one of those processes we have to figure out and we would definitely start trying to get that ironed out because I'm with you that that can be stressful especially when you get you got a lot of people that want to help and that's awesome so you want to make it easier for them to help and easier for you so that you don't get overwhelmed because it can definitely get overwhelming when people are looking at you to answer all the all their questions so、um, Vlad and Shamgar see both unmuted Shamgar I know you are unmuted first for a while what's going on. Um, I just feel kind of bad because I can't really help towards those projects as much as I want to right now, just because I've been like busy developing the stream team. Like this guy in here, this is the editor I found that's gonna be doing a lot of content for me and for us, and I'm gonna be paying him. So, I it's been kind of like、mm, not stressful like you were saying. Like it is kind of been like that, but it's more so just a process, and I'm trying to like get everybody together. I just would like to have more time to where I could help in those projects, but also still do the stream thing. So I'm just trying to get the flow of everything together right now. Yep, exactly, and、um, and that's cool because one of the things, especially when I had talked about the stream team earlier, I had got, I had kind of mentioned to them how we, you know, we're talking about the tiers and about how when people come in and they, you know, start out as an apprentice and then start to gain more of their roles from there. I even also,、um, Shamgar and I had talked a lot more about those incentives that you receive for that.、Um, again, one of those kind of exclusive tips I'm going to hold on to until the time comes. But even how we Um, incentivize people for how they move up in the community、um, and get new roles.、Uh, just think of it like Girl Scouts, you know, and you you kind of earn a little patch on your sash when you. Kind of move around, so that same concept. We'll get into the details later, but those are also the same kind of processes that we're rolling out, and that's not only going to be for the stream team, but something that we can keep consistent throughout the entire DAO. You know,、yeah. uh, so that's How do we do the smart contract. So that's that was like my biggest like not concern, but like thinking about it because with every like like any like any esports like a video game like Fortnite, they always try to do like. Contracts for players and it's like horrible. But I feel like with this DAO system, we have a way to do smart contracts that like not only hold us accountable and the players accountable, but it doesn't make it to where like obviously people are getting scammed or like took out of money or people's rights and stuff are being taken away. Really like 
that situated. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the best ways for something like that is by using um, like a social token almost or like our and that's what the um, NFT would be. Right. So basically um, and this will be a kind of a good recap for everyone. So one of the things we talked about was first establishing a code of conduct. And you guys know we've talked about that kind of here before as a general code of conduct for general members. But we will have also one specific for when you're trying to join things like our stream team, because that will be an entire another asset aspect of our community, especially um, for our stream team. We are looking at younger kid or younger people like we want to have a, a kid we stream team a middle school that. uh high school adults like different ages to be able to educate them on being in this space as well because that's who's in these metaverses that's who's out here gaming um so kind of being like that uh supervisor in this space almost while also helping them and educating them on how they can use their skills in ways that make sense um for their future so uh, starting with that code of conduct and then once they agree they would receive an nft and that's would be them agreeing to be a part of that and that, that they're accepting those code of conducts um and then if that nft was to get burned then they would get like kicked out of the discord and lose those kind of privileges yeah i think though for the stream team like uh the kids i had in the call the last time they were just lost in that conversation because we we got through too many topics. That was one <laughs> yeah, of the we things did. I want to think about with the like the the stream team. Like we have to change this for kids and not change us or what we say or not what we say, but how we say it to where kids can understand you. Because I'm telling you right now, like these 12 year olds, like they were literally lost trying to listen to this guy. Like it just was, it wasn't going through their head. Like I understood, I know everything he's talking about, but for them, that's like a whole different world. And you're yeah, gonna have to, like we have to find a way to bridge that gap, or kids aren't going to understand that. Exactly. And that's what we've talked about, um, how we're, how we are going to be doing that. But, um, just for the entire ecosystem, those are the different things that we are looking at. Right. And so yeah. very, very exciting and interesting on how we're exploring what that even looks like, right. With onboarding. So, um, how about I see you've unmuted. What's up? Yeah. Just, uh, wanted to, to add, you know, well, to what I said, you know, uh, that, on the you know the scheduling on the Fridays, like for this one that happened with the the Chrome in the metaverse that Pedro guest mentioned that they're going to be taking to the Decentraland. So, you know, this kind of things like we already have said like the Dalka to be the one to be hosting that space, and we weren't supposed to be on the Decentraland. But once the the, mm -hmm. the community mentioned that, well, Jebel's mentioned everybody embraced it, and Pedro guess he was the one to take on. You know, Fabrican is like taking the idea that they won't be taking on the space at Altarash place um, in the central land, but be will be hosted from Fabrican. So uh, when I talk to them, it's like we already have like DressX and Dalka for that. And, you know, this kind of things is like, I don't want to get friction because they, they already, you know, they're being so, so nice about it. But mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing that I don't know how to handle, you know, also people that or submitted their idea for the cover and you know if they want to take over if they say i we want to do have some you know fabric and stuff so i don't want to get you know in the middle of it because we want them to be on the spaces but i want to be embracing you know the independence so that that kind of bridging is like the one i'm having trouble right now so i don't want to be you know making conflicts with anyone or maybe the independence you know like on click closet you know uh, ever since the first meta jewelers the ones that we we made, she has the wearable on her on, on her wearable on the cover. Mm -hmm. So the idea was that we, we were about to make some promo for her wearable to maybe get a sale because they will, she asked me to help her about with her with that because they were looking to, to get into a new project with jewelry with the belts. So they wanted to get money for the wearable to start the other thing. You know? So I haven't made any you know promotion for it because I'm trying to get in the right idea. So I don't want people to to feel disappointed with the idea that I, I'm asking, you know, for their work to be promoted and I'm not promoting anything because we already have some dates booked. The Friday's the uh, dates book and maybe, you know, I have to go with the ones they already booked, you know, to, to host mm -hmm. and maybe do the covers for them. And, you know, I, we will be taking the independence work like for 
I don't know, two le- two months later to be working on the cover. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of thing is the one that I'm trying to understand how to deal with that and how to embrace the people that is submitting, like the good projects that is gonna be giving us traction, mm-hmm. but as well for the independents to mm-hmm. so we can promote their work. So that's where I'm having that friend in the you know bottleneck. Yeah, well, you know what, Hava, I got an idea, kind of just listening to you talk there. One, I think with doing the opening, like, you know, right now you've received enough feedback, so you're not accepting new panelists, and then open it up, you know, again, maybe you create that outline, you've got enough people now, set out, you know, look, look at what you have, and put them in June, you know, and say, these are our topics that we have in June. Because also say, for example, if everybody knew what was going on for the next lineup, then that's how we can avoid situations like everybody thinking we are going to go into the metaverse on Friday, because um, it's kind of preset that we already know what's happening that next Friday. So I think with pre planning the spaces as best as we can, that will kind of help negate that. And then also um, limiting when people can submit so that you're not always getting 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 and then feeling like you have to add them at that time. And then it also sets the expectation for them. Um, Because I think, you know, right now being super open is great but think about any kind of like not job but like any opportunity if you were to go and be a part of something people will let you know what you're able to do you know so we can very put it out there like this is a topic on this date that we're having this is when you can contribute this is how you can do it and for the flyers we don't have to just have one flyer you know just like that one time when the three of us had created flyers and although like yours was the main one that we had shared like say for example yours will be the main one that we put on the podcast right because it's the um style or maybe we choose somebody else's that we choose that we will be kind of like the main one maybe we make it a part of the community on which one will be the cover of the podcast and will be the nft but that's something that we can continue to do where it's like hey everybody make content if you want everybody spread the word that fashion fridays is happening you know put the content together and then whichever one gets the most interactions that's the one that will be minted and so does the nft that friday and on the podcast cover so that you know it's still getting that um feedback and people can put the content out um but you know, we only use one as the NFT and one as the podcast cover. Also something there, um, Javo, I think that there's like, so especially when we're having these new spaces crop up, like the physical, the digital space, we can not only, it's like a win-win for whether it's flyers or, you know, topics of discussion, obviously there's going to be a lot of overlap Mm -hmm. and there's one space that is getting a lot of tension and one that's just kind of like just starting and we can get more like interest across the board, more consistency over days. If we're like essentially sh- like sending people from Fashion Friday to Thursday, and like if I, I'll, I'll come out with not even like not just next week's schedule, but like a loose okay, here are the topics we're even discussing. Please write more next to it if like you know there's something there uh, that you don't see that you'd like to discuss as part of within the scope on, um, but I, you know, the chances of it being relevant for a lot of what you're getting or us making it relevant is like very, very high. And we have a lot of capacity to bring people on. So that can also diffuse situations and then also just get, you know, all of our spaces, more, more attendance and more publicity. Yep. Yeah. And then right, like, like she said, use all the spaces. Cause even the one on Wednesday, that one is used more as like a spotlight. So it is in collaboration with others, but it's usually just like one artist that will like this week we had Dylan and it's like, okay, Dylan, let's talk about your NFTs and mental health and then open the discussion. Um, because it's it's that spotlight you know sometimes it's an artist like like I just said Dylan has uh, experience in mental health so that's why we chose him to talk about fashion and mental health you know what we've talked about so many different things uh, like 3d printing and we're talking to Sylvia Sylvia Hessel you know and it's like okay awesome but we talked we talked about her and her 
what she's creating, but also dug into 3D printing and how you can access that basically anywhere in the world and what that looks like and how you can get started and, you know, those different things from her own experience. So um, just like she said, we can really look at all of our spaces and see how we can cause less friction by spacing it, utilizing it and um, using all of all of what we have. Yes, definitely. That was what I was uh, thinking of it, like getting diluted, uh, diluted or spread around the people that is getting submissions to different topics like physical to digital yeah. and maybe adding the, the gens, you know, but uh, some different, you know, the people that it can fit in there, like crypto, moms in crypto. Yeah. And so we can, you know, have more options in not just the fashion fright. I know the fashion fright is getting like the attention to it. So that's the idea that why they submit in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, so uh, in, a, in a way, like maybe getting in a waiting room so it don't feel like you're not getting the enemy to the fashion Friday. You know, it's just like, no, we're giving you space also in other spaces. But yeah. you, you know, eventually you can get on fashion Friday because there's a as schedule that need to be attended, you know, exactly, like exactly. And that's what having the schedule will even allow us, right? By saying, okay, this is what we have here, this is what we have here, here's what we have here, and here's where we can add you and be able to help promote that. And, you know, just keep being that person to be able to help showcase this stuff for people because that's what you know people want just to connect and that's cool we can connect and do it in a smart way so i think it'll really work out great yeah and um that's i'm gonna put that um Java in, in miro i'm gonna have a space because that was the purpose of having like the schedule where like the fashion dows on there with what they're doing on tuesdays and then we're doing this on thursdays and then i do i'm just gonna put the DeFi course in just because that's relevant to everyone that wants to come um that not for this conversation but um people could be interested like stuff like that and then we can just have like a, a text box where you know people say you know I, i'd love to talk about this i'd love to participate in an artist spotlight because yes. i know there's some projects like needing artists for spotlights like they literally like i'm doing alistair next week he's an awesome photographer but he literally just posted on twitter like does anyone want to host me on a spotlight like so sad i was like yeah dude you freaking rock yeah um, but Damn. I, so like a no shame way to like say people are like, hey, I just love I've not gotten a chance to talk on like, especially if they're new, like, I don't know how to come up and like, just throw myself at the speaker stand. Um, I know that that even for me, like, and now I can't not but like, for new people, that's, uh, that's kind of a high barrier. And so if they just have to write their name, then all of a sudden they're like on a list. It's a w way bigger difference. Right. And you know, thinking about that too, I'm thinking maybe our Wednesday space can turn also more into like a chill and chill. Sometimes I, that's one space that uh, Tiny had wanted to start eventually. Um, but now we have all these other spaces that are so already like focused. Um, you know, we can have like an artist, like you said, spotlight, maybe just open it up sometimes for like a chill and chill where any artist can just hop up there and start shilling what they're doing because those are a lot of the common spaces that people are looking for to be a part of too with a interactive community one awesome yeah, yeah. thing i've seen in those shill and chills like the best there's i forget who does the um a series of these shill and chills where essentially like people come and say like i'm gonna i i, I come and like when i join it's like you get put as a speaker if you're like you know i have 0.1 eth 0.2 eth 0.5 eth and I'm spending it on this space. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be like a requirement, but it's really fun. You like, if that's happening, if someone comes up and says that, you like put it in the title mm -hmm. and it is literally like, it's like, I don't even know, like freaking people rushing the the fences at when a festival opens. Like, it is insane how many people pour into the space. And like, it's so fun because it's almost like turns into like a shark tape tank type thing but it's obviously right. just like one or two people's personal yeah. preference but like and then 100%. you're like selling you're selling and if you're selling nfts on the spot and typically it ends up going they've gotten it up to like 12 nfts sold before like people started coming out of the speaker thing and be like mm -hmm. i'm buying one right now i'm buying one on the space like yes yeah. it's just like it's a really fun but like you don't have to put pressure on it like it's just a chill and chill but do be like hey we do this thing where you know if you have ETH to spend, we're going to get a lot of cool people. We have a lot of cool people. We're going to get a lot of cool people. If you want a bunch of cool stuff pitched to you right now, what you should buy, like mm -hmm. we can make that happen. So you just let us know 
And yeah, it makes it really fun. Yeah, and maybe we can yeah, super fun. Maybe we can co- sorry, sorry. collab with some collectors, right? And kind of do like a Shark Tank. Like, hey, this collector exactly, is trying yeah, to like collect. I- Let's you know hear it. And- yes, yeah, yeah. There was a space. I don't know if you guys ever uh, check it out. That guy, a space from uh, I think he's called Bomgar, the name of the the account of the guy. I think it's for Egypt or some Cairo. I don't know where it was. But he had some uh, a super cool idea with uh, one space that was for sale NFTs. You know that's that's actually the idea that got me into making the Fashion Fridays. But you know I wanted to make like his space for fashion, like selling wearables, because he went like this crazy hosting with musics and everything. He's like so hype. You know he has so much energy in the spaces, and there are spaces we were getting like 150, 200 people there. So they're, they're like, okay, we have this link right now of this wearable, oh, sorry, so this uh, piece of art or NFT on the pin tweet. So please, everybody, in 15 seconds, 10 seconds, we're going to retweet that so everybody can see it, say, maybe have a sale then. One, two, the 10, and they retweet it, and they actually got sales, you know, and they were posting the sales on the on the Twitter uh, name. So like 125 uh, sales, 200 sales, you know, because they they this this. They do this crazy 24 oh. hour space nonstop. Yeah. So it was people just popping in, popping in, popping in, I popping out, those, you know. Yeah, I used to, I used to participate in some of those. It's so fun. The energy is just like so incredible. And I yeah, like crazy. one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. And he's actually a big part of our community now. And he just gifted me one of his n- new release. Like I would, anytime I had any extra ETH, I mean, it was the best marketing. It was the only marketing and really best marketing I ever did because anytime I had extra ETH, I would go like NFT shopping um, and I would only buy work from artists that who had never sold an NFT before because having launched Faithful Youth, like ha- having gone through this process, like, and I didn't know before, I, I'm so aware of what it means to make your first sale it, you, for you psychologically and for um, everyone else. Like I would bid on stuff. I had to be I had to be badgered to make a bid and then I put the bid in it's a month long auction put the bid in and in the last 12 hours I get into a bidding war that runs it up to uh, over an ETH it's this guy's for it was this guy's first um piece and it's just like what what anyone buying something validates like it validates st- things in people's minds that essentially sets them up and like the outpouring I get to do my favorite thing which is shop run of teas then I'm making someone's actual life and they're just like dying about it because it's their first sale. And then we're best friends because I was their first sale. And I have like tons of those now because that's all I used to do. So um, we can like, you can do that where it's like, hey, we're hosting people that have never sold an NFT. And you know what? At least one NFT is going to be sold on the space. And if more people have said like soft confirmed that they have capital, like we're going to sell at least this amount of like first nfts of people like that anyone in the nft space knows that like that is the most powerful thing um and like not even for engagement farming just for like you know building hype in the community and bringing people's spirits up yeah. it's like so important right and, and really inspiring so, artists sorry Vlad, i know you've been trying to pop in there go ahead no no i just so you're talking once we get the once we get the fashion show out of the way yes and we get a chance to do another build session. We build a studio, and then we have uh, QVC Wednesday night, and we basically do the QVC thing for eight or uh, for NFTs, and we show them off and see how much uh, drama we can stir up in this space. Yeah, is that what we're? Exactly. Sounds like a plan. It sounds like a plan. I mean, and, you, and you know what? We don't even have to build a new space. We can do that right in our world that we already have built. That will showcase the displays, you know, and maybe at that point now your display gets added into that or something. Well, I, I would say we build a corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they walk through right all there. of that. Right, right. Too, because you want a studio. You exactly. want some place where you're, because okay. you're going to re- be recording your stuff to show elsewhere on the other nights that you're not doing this. Yes, I because love I'm, that. You're talking, because, I mean, you know, <clears throat> do uh, book uh, club tuesday night Uh and i can get because i promise you if you just want to get authors who are willing to mint a signed copy of their book as an nft Mm -hmm. and set it up 
in my other existence, writing novels, I'm in a group that's over 30,000 published authors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you want to talk about an onboarding opportunity. It's a huge one. Yeah. But we have to have something to show them because the last time I brought up the idea, I got the, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea, but, but, but uh, you know, it, it's a, you know, I'm not really sure that's a good, where we want to go. Psst. Yeah, we've been heard about it before, but nobody's really doing it. Right. And but we got to be that example. I'm I, with you, though. I think that'd be cool as hell. Got, and, and I'll be honest, my first one that I, that I did was just kind of a little, you know, I had my, my goofy little children's book that I did. I meant it up you know, a few of them, and then I haven't sold a one. But then I haven't advertised them either. Mm -hmm. uh, because I just did it to see how the process was. I spent way more money than I should have. But I got the experience of putting it out there. Mm -hmm. uh, now, but this next one that I'm doing is going to be a legitimate NFT book. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to make a go of it. Okay. Uh, I'm just waiting for the company that I'm minting it through to actually go live and they're talking that it's not weeks anymore you know it's maybe 10 days nice. you know, so as soon as that happens i'll have it done because unfortunately they're a comic book focused thing and not a novel focused thing so i'll be the goofy oddball in their crew mm -hmm. but i don't care i at least get started and once I do, we'll go from there. And I didn't mean to right. interrupt with this. But I just wanted to be sure I had the idea because if we build the space to do it, we could do multiple things. And that helps Havo out. Or ha Is it Hava? Havo? Javo? I heard it a hundred different ways. Can I'm probably saying it absolutely it? wrong. So the opposite I don't, of what I'm saying. Say, I, I, don't care I think in the Spanish it. language, J makes an H sound. Unless well, I'm... that's what I thought too. <laughs> I but can't I even say wrong. the English language. <laughs> I just don't want to yeah, yeah, well, let, let's clarify that, you know. So my name is Javier Guzman, you know, like the Chapo Guzman. Oh, uh, man, just, don't hit me with those R's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm Javier. Gonna, I'm going to mess it up. So it, yeah, yeah, if you pronounce it like ha, 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 when you're laughing, so it's Javier, Javier, yeah, it's like that, Javo. you know. Javo, Javo, it's okay, you know, it's great. Yeah, but that's I only took Javier 13 Guzman. years of Spanish. I just think it's where I wasn't being, because uh, I was kind of the odd man out, and I didn't want to be wrong. Yeah, you're like, I don't know. It's like a 50-50 here. You know, oh. <laughs> it was a 50-50 chance yeah, that anybody well, could have been right or yeah. wrong. Last thing, Mo, the, when the, it's all said and done, can you give me a minute, minute and a half max? I don't want to interrupt everybody else's day, but I do want to talk to you for just a minute, minute and a half. And I'll oh, get yeah. Out of Definitely, definitely. And we can keep talking because especially if you're about to, you know, hop out there with your writings as NFT stuff, we can definitely, you know, look at how we can tackle that um, writing market as well. So no, I was going to ask you about the uh, little web page that I built and sent over to if you had a look at it and if it made any sense to you. Yeah, it did. Um, it did make a lot of sense for, for that. So, yeah, we can chat after um, this, which I think we are wrapping up now. I know this has been almost one of our two-hour calls, and y'all know sometimes it does go there. But think, look at all this awesome stuff it that happens. we talked about. So um, it's been great, especially we are, you know, the ones that are really pushing us forward and building this foundation for the rest of the overflow to come in. So I know we are going to build a, an awesome foundation, and once we keep putting it out there, we are going to be prepared in a in a perfect position for the, when those floodgates open so um everybody i, I did have one more thing i wanted oh, yeah. to say just because it's been like a burning question for like a week now and i've been waiting to say it on this community call um what so you were talking i mean we talked a lot last time about the fashion dow and 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 where that fits in and i'm not going to talk anything about that but just brought them up because of how powerful their name is mm -hmm. um what what was your guys's, um, or I guess, what is your continued thought process on not including the word fashion at all in your name? I know, like, red, da there's so many, uh, so many, you know, DAOs and projects that have names that don't relate to fashion at all. And so that's a fine answer. I'm just curious, like, you know, the raw, raw fashion DAO, or like, why, I guess, why wouldn't you want to go that route just because of how nascent the space is and how what if I've learned anything is that you have to be overly blatant or someone like if they saw the raw down the fashion down and they're into fashion who are they going to go with 
who are they even going to look into? Yeah. And so- I, you can tell by their community calls. You can tell by their onboarding. Um, and it's like you guys are far, far ahead in terms of execution. But like they'll have, you know, 30 odd people, 40 people in a each community call, like growing rapidly by each one. Um, and it's not a competition. It's especially when I freaking sit on every single committee committee and, you know, we're whether whoever likes it or not going to be sharing resources and not doing things twice. And um, and so but yeah, I was just curious because of how um, spoon fed everyone has to be, why you guys chose to go that route or what your pro- proclivity would be to adding fashion somewhere in the name yeah no that's a really good question and i'm happy you brought that up um i did actually even follow up with them because i got a little more clarity on how sops got brought up to um them actually i think you were the one that had mentioned that to them which is perfectly fine um i mentioned sops yeah right yeah i don't even know what sops stands for Okay, it's it's standard neither operating he- procedure. <laughs> yeah, standard operating procedure. Neither neither here nor there. I I have talked to them again um because again, yeah. I was like I just didn't want the point to be mistaken. It doesn't matter who thought of it, who wants to do it. My main thing is how we can all collaborate, right? Cuz like you said, um, the biggest thing is raw Dow. Why we don't have fashion in our name is because we aren't necessarily just focused on fashion. Fashion is kind of like the biggest NFT area that we look at because um, it's like if you look at any revolution, that is the um, trigger, right? That can help people understand. I'm a very like simplistic person. If I'm explaining something, I'm not going to use all the scientific terminology to explain it i'm going to use the complete opposite so that you can understand it in a very simple way so fashion is one of those things that make you understand that this is real in a very simple way it has real utility in a very simple way so and we came from under a fashion um dow basically but one thing i learned from that fashion dow is they were an umbrella to a bigger dow that included gaming skins engineering like everything that actually makes the entire ecosystem move right so it's just like how we have the streamers like say for example why gaming and streaming is is connected say we have our gamers right say we put them they're all in fortnite so we make fortnite skins and now we're sponsoring them because they're wearing our skins in fortnite right so it's like those two are so closely connected because of how we can transform both industries by bringing them together so our goal here with raw is to show people how we can bring everyone together so we do have to be connected with the fashion dow because i'm like man it would be great the fashion dow already like you said has all those designers right so it's like keep attracting all of them keep educating all of them keep growing together and then keep creating as SOPs that just get added to our reference library as well. That was my main thing with that is we want to make sure we're collaborating in that so that we can say that to the fashion DAO. We can say that to the gaming DAO. We can say that to the photography DAO. There's actually another DAO named the Raw DAO that has come about and they're about photography. You know, there's so there's a lot of different DAOs that are, have different focus areas and that's great. And we just want to be that central hub that they connect to to share their resources <laughs> for the next person. Yeah, and that's that's also where like the C3 collective can be really um, helpful there because we're not only like and we already have stronger ties in like the photography and multi like fine art one of one space um, on both chains, um, Solana and Ethereum than we do. F- that's where I've been this whole time, actually, since uh, December, uh, just because we were a portrait photography collection. And so, um, you know, our our main goal is to essentially remove all the barriers to entry for you know, a fashion designer or a photographer coming into the space, mm-hmm. whether they want to launch a collection or they just want to make a name for themselves as a designer. Um, how do we lower the barriers to entry and then provide a f- monetized um, full service kind of this is the end goal, but I'm already doing it for two projects. So um, really, I'm just trying to distribute the, the value there across the community um, is provide launch services, leveraging shared resources. So, um, you know, that's going to come up probably a lot in people that you encounter and now that we're plugged pretty well into fashion as well and starting to get like 
I am hooked up with a bunch of the fashion community over on Solana. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that C3, when it gets um, more up and running, can be kind of that like glue to other um, art forms. Because when you're talking about skills and, um, you know, really so much is the same, just the art itself. Mm -hmm. um, and not only sh like transferring those learnings and resources, but also just like expanding the community reach, right? Like people like me, like might not know they're super into fashion and realize how much opportunity um, and not just m monetary opportunity, like opportunity to really make a difference in people's lives yeah. um, is here, right? So you're, there's, it's a fantastic opportunity to just spread kind of a real true use case for Web3 where it's really needed. Um, you know, I think everyone agrees music and they are now agreeing that it's fashion. And so- yeah there's a lot of people just sitting on the sidelines that may not create digital fashion. Maybe they're just collectors. Maybe they create, you know, painting or whatever, but could be interested. So hoping C3 can kind of be that glue. Yeah. I it, probably would never have been here if it just had been fashion. Yeah. I was going to use kinda, that as that example too. Yeah. I, I kind of, yeah, I got three colors in my wardrobe, white, black, and gray. Better than me. I only have gray. one is black. <laughs> well, no, no, the, the, the White, I consider white gray. Oh, dude, me, I'm the least fashion person, though, trust me. <laughs> but I don't see, think I've changed out of boxers in my wetsuit in like months. I, I, saw, I saw a young lady that was talking about, about Web3 when I was trying to figure it all out a little over a month ago, and she understood the money side. Oh my God, she got it, and she was probably not more than 20 or 22. And I'm like, little girl with pink hair. And I'm like, oh, my God, if she gets it at that age, then sh this is something I've got to figure out. Well, I went over, and the first time I got into the Dow, the very first thing I found was somebody tried to scam me. And I caught him at it. So yes. I locked him out. I, locked him out <laughs> I caught him I at it. That. And then somebody else there goes, hey, look, you, you probably should go down to Alana and talk with Stella. And I got hooked in with Stella, which got me hooked in with Mo. And then the rest is history. I ran into you and I'm like, oh, now I've got three of them that kind of got their act together. I, I'm in good shape. Got in with Masashi and, and, and Havo. And I'm like, OK, I can work with these people. And so I hooked up with people, not necessarily with the fashion. Any people that, that actually know me in real life, that know my history, know what I work on and other things I do, when they hear I'm working with fashion stuff, they kind of snicker. They look at me and they're like, do they know you? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's the same like, thing. They, just like the me, you know? <laughs> they like the ideas when they're not driving them crazy. Yeah, Most yeah. When, time, I, when I told my wife that I was be hosting, sorry, and when I told my wife that I want to be hosting the fabric and space at the Central Land for the, you know, the Meta Metaverse Fashion Week, you know, she laughed at me, you know, like so hard. <laughs> like, you? Right. What are you going to talk about about fashion? Like, you don't know nothing about fashion. And like, I'm going to be talking about fashion. I'm just going to be onboarding people, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but then there's a role for everybody, you know. And, and that's why when you, were, when you guys were talking, um, I was thinking, like, if, I w if we were to add anything into the name, I would say call it the Raw Networking DAO. Because honestly... Networking or education, yeah. Yeah, you know, education is what people get when they get here because we want to educate them about the space but it's really that network that you get who you're who are you learning from that's you know invaluable because now you have that resource and everybody that you're meeting is now able to share resources you know when i'm introducing people first thing i tell them is hey go ahead and share share your news article or share something that you have going on so that we can see what kind of resources that you're going to be pouring into the community you know and um so I think that network effect is definitely something that uh, gives us that advantage and why people, you know, look at raw like, oh, I want to be connected with them because they are connected to so many others. So keeping that network effect um, as a forefront is definitely a goal. So, yeah, that's a great. That's one, a fantastic answer. So, no, I, I totally love the name. The best um, yeah. yeah, it doesn't limit you. Right. Right. Exactly. And then we can awesome. always. I'm grow. also pissed about that, though. The the SOP thing, like I'm done. Integrity is a huge thing for me. And like, 
I'm like, that couldn't be any farther from the truth. So like, I'm like really confused right now. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any confusion. I meant to do just no, the no, opposite. Like, I, I, want, <laughs> I want to know, like I put in a, I'm putting, essentially I'm putting them before my own project right now. Projects. And so if they're like throwing me under the bus in this case, because they know that I'm probably the only one besides like Miko that's like had consistent communication with you guys. So there's no one else to go to. Um, that's really messed up. Well, it really doesn't matter who's doing it because SOP is a procedure. I mean, military's used it for years. It's this common thing that, that, Everybody the military and up. Jesus. I was in the military and I don't even. Yeah, <laughs> and, use, like, and and stuff. yeah. I mean, it, like, it is very common, and that's where I got it from. From my old corporate job, I, you know, being up in their um, educational like department, I was writing the SOPs for the entire corporation. We start a new process, write an SOP for it. So that's where I got the idea from. Um, but again, it really, it, it really, it wasn't like throwing you on the under the bus. It was more so me just kind of being like, hey, I just wanted to make sure again that what my question was didn't get confused because my question was just why would somebody might hear the idea and want to do it independent of raw so that we can yeah. fix that issue so that we can just do it all together not like but i'm i guess else. i'm so they said kelly brought up sops um no just that you know it was a whole conversation and that it was just like nobody was under the impression that it was from raw more than anything and I'm like, okay, well, that, again, just says that Raw has to be making sure that, you know, we're putting that out there, that, you know, we're doing SOPs so that anybody can, but also how people can contribute to that. And um, it was great. You know, it, it was... How they make sure that they can tie their library in with ours. Right, exactly. Because, again, databases, the beautiful thing about them, as long as you make them... Connected. Interoperable. Exactly. There you go. That's the searchable, key word, you know, Vlad. Interoperable. Right. Connected. The, the you can get here to there. In and... both databases. Right. Then oh, no, hello, guys. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. I just uh, I need to jump out. So it was a great call. You know, okay. very informative. I will be talking with you guys all. You know, during the week. Okay. So have a great Sunday, everybody. Bye, Havo. Bye, yes. bye. I was gonna say the same. Bye. Thing. Take care. Same, same and and show the care, from who's boss. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Have a great day. Cool. Bye bye. Um, but yeah, Kelly, definitely nothing like that. Um, everything is all great. Um, you know, because like you said, I didn't. I'm very straightforward as well, and so I just wanted to make sure that nobody's intention was misinterpreted, and that we can all just work in a cohesive manner. So I think that's what was established, and it was just like a sorry if there was any misunderstandings. There were plenty of people that were involved that didn't know that rat was from Raw as well. That was more like a th the census of the conversation. Cause because if you create two silos, it becomes a problem. As long as you've got, as long as there's inter interoperability where who cares who's hosting it as long as we can access the data and they can too exactly exactly and the and the reason why we want it connected with raw is just because like we said you know we're going to be connected with the fashion DAO that's going to be sending in their fashion DAO sops but we're also going to be connected with um maybe harvard who's submitting their sops for how to create educational institutions or how to cr write curriculums or whatever the kind of sops that they have going on and the fashion DAO can maybe use something that Harvard is in or is putting and then maybe you know again just all the different kind of people that we can be connected with and how they can share resources amongst each other to help each other more than anything so just making sure that um that was more ironed out so that you know that wouldn't be like a hurdle was what I just wanted to like get cleared out yeah, I guess I, I just didn't know you guys were even doing SOPs. The first time I heard it, it was the fashion DAO um, because, you know, I was just popping in here, like dropping something and then leaving. Um, And so I guess this isn't just the first weird thing that's happened. And I so like, I mean, my time is like incredibly valuable. I don't sleep and like I'm not going to be putting in work for people that are like using me in any kind of scapegoat way, even if it's not going to like tarnish my reputation or anything like that. It's like I'm just not I don't have time for that. Um, and this is not the first time Nico's um, done something like that, which was a different situation. But oh. I would I'm well, not like also trying to mess around. I was going to say also it was not a conversation I had with her um, that clarified that it was just more other people that I know are amongst it. And I was just kind of putting it out there like, hey, 
this is what's happened. What is your perspective of it? And it was just more like, no, there were plenty of people, even that the, the people that I was talking to. I'm like, don't you guys remember when I talked about SOPs? And they're like, I don't remember what it is. And I'm like, remember, I had the <laughs> avatar and I'm showing the I how-to I can concur videos. with that. It's like SOP can be exactly. a million different things in my book. I was just like, even at the fashion DAO, I don't know the context in which they're using SOPs. Like, what well, I don't know. So that's why I knew about it. I knew that we were doing SOPs or something, but like, I would have had no, exactly like you said, like Harvard has SOPs. So I didn't like connect those dots in my brain, like at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Even when I did find out, um, like later on that you were both doing them, it wasn't like, oh, these could potentially overlap. Like that didn't even cross my mind. Right. Um, And and that's why I wanted to clarify, like, hey, these should be connected. (laughs) You know, like, let's not, because like you said, you know, a lot of us are doing the same thing and let's not waste efforts trying to do the same thing. You know, let's just get past whatever hurdles we need to get past and maximize our efforts here. So I think we were able to definitely do that. And I think all of us working together the way that we are and finding those ways are working great. So definitely no worries. Um, Water under a bridge. I would say don't even think about it anymore. Everything has been clarified and um, you know, you're, you're in the right place where, where you need to be and you know, just moving how you should be moving. To keep, I'm still keep dying to know what branch, what branch was oh, Air, Air Force. Oh. oh, see, I knew I liked you for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I got some uh, some some leadership training there. I was I was there for I commissioned out of USC as an officer, and then um, worked oh, in. The- see, and there you went there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should um, I should have known you was in the military, Vlad. <laughs> I, what, what, I, what branch were you in? I was Air Force, but I was oh, nice. nice. I was How a crew chief for the Looking Glass. Oh, I only did a little over three years. Oh, same. I, uh, I got out on the fat boy program. I got out uh, on the, I, they, I don't, I just am really good at uh, playing the system and systems I don't believe in. So they paid for five years of USC, 300 grand. And then I didn't only do, I didn't, I didn't do my five-year commitment um, and just swindle my way out with but, an honorable discharge. Nothing like well, no exactly the same year. Um, they, uh, it was right after uh, Bill Clinton got in and the first Gulf War was over and they were taking a Daddy Bush took a meat axe to the budget as soon as the war was over and a bunch of old men were trying to hang on to their jobs.